We have a really interesting case study, and I'm actually glad that it's at the end of the conference because it's going to touch on a lot of the themes that we've actually been hearing for the past two and a half days now. Social media is going to be in here, neuroscience, biometrics, emotional connections with consumers and brands, and it wraps it all up in a real life situation that we were facing. And that was um, at post uh, for our brand, Post Shredded Wheat. Everybody here kind of familiar with Shredded Wheat, the brand? Yes. Appease me, say yes. Yeah, okay. There it is, you know. Um, been around for 100 years. And so, um, you know, we had a, a real unique kind of situation before us. We, and we'll walk through that in the case study. You know, we'll set up with what kind of we were feeling in market. And then this manifestation of a big, why is that happening? And how we needed to go to a deeper level that traditional methods, honestly, only got us so far. And we needed to go down, you know, three, four, five levels deeper. And that's when we partnered with MSense and Millward Brown and their very unique approach in integrating their two technologies and their two approaches to understanding why advertising is doing what it's doing. And it got us a really holistic view into the mind of the consumer. We all saw the house this morning. That's where I needed to go. I needed to go inside that house because my issue was so big and uh, so deep. And so their approach really got me there that no other approaches were honestly gonna get me there. And so it was that approach where we could see what the consumer was feeling, what they were doing, and then ultimately what they were thinking and how that was coming through in their in-market behavior. And ultimately, then what that led to was these insights that we gleaned from this approach helped refocus this brand and then secondarily helped us on the path towards recovery. So in terms of the business situation that we were facing, Post Shredded Wheat, as I mentioned, has been around for 100 years. So, and we're competing in a very mature, highly competitive category. On average, 255 cereal SKUs on the typical grocer's shelf. You know, close to what, maybe 2,000 or so brands, give or take a few, um, that are measured as by a leading syndicated data provider. And, um, with that, you really need to be focused on those switchers. It's all about the switchers. There's not a lot of uh, category growth happening. And so with that, you need to be laser targeted in who your consumer is and have a clear point of difference and seed that point of view with them and really disrupt that shopping behavior and that shopping routine. And so what we saw happening with post shredded wheat was that um, its sales were softening and we really needed to do something to inject some life into this brand. Again, that's 100 years old. And we developed a 360 degree uh, integrated marketing communications uh, campaign. And we had three primary objectives behind that. We wanted to be provocative. We wanted to get the consumer's attention. And when we had their attention, we wanted to give them something meaningful to say, engage with them in a different way than they had ever thought of post shredded wheat before. Once we had their attention, um, you know, we wanted to uh, see, as I mentioned, the point of difference and then drive them to the shelf. You know, we initially had done some traditional research to vet out this idea, non-link, and it was, uh, you know, message testing. We did some other quantitative approaches some qualitative approaches to really, you know, massage it and get it to a place that felt right. And we, because of some of the uh, uh, social currency that we thought could be behind this idea, we wanted to test it out live. We were just going to go roll the dice and see how they kind of came out. And we tested it out in market. And so. What we started to do when we built out this, uh, this campaign was we started it with a product truth. We started it with what the brand was all about. And that was, when you look at Post Shredded Wheat, it is nothing but one honest ingredient, wheat. And this is happening at a time, this is in 2008, where the consumer in the recession is still really raw. And so, and on top of that, we have a lot of product quality scares going on. 
So we're seeing that, you know, this brand has a long, rich heritage, 100 years. It's a brand that's familiar, it's trusted, it has a pure ingredient line, tapping into a lot of those trends that the consumer was looking for at that time. So we juxtaposed that in a creative envelope that uh, took the product simplicity and that heritage and put it up kind of in a, in a cultural kind of rub, shall we say, against the uh, ever-changing, complicated lives that we are living today. And that was told through a cast of characters um, uh, that worked for Post Shredded Wheat and their distinct points of view. The campaign was launched with a 60 second spot on Sunday morning and started to get a lot of industry buzz going about it. We're getting picked up in Ad Age and in Progressive Grocer, USA Today. You know, the, the buzz is all really coming to be positive. You can see some of the quotes here going back to basics, re consumers fed up all kinds of things tapping into what that creative envelope was all about. The Facebook fans were coming in, they're, they're friending us, and they're saying great things like, this is brilliant, post-shredded wheat is inspiring. I mean, that one was like, post-shredded wheat is inspiring? Wow, this is what advertising should be. Um, the the uh, YouTube videos that we had up, getting several hundred thousand hits, five-star ratings, the online campaign, above average click-through rates, by all accounts, this is sounding pretty good. We're, we're doing something right here. Well, remember that initial kind of objective that we had, that our sales weren't looking and being in the place we exactly wanted them to be? I'm watching that and I'm going, uh-oh. There was a breakdown and it was big. So what happened? Where did we go wrong? Where in the advertising where, why, and how, essentially, were the questions we had, I had, and we know, needed to go really deep. And looking back, you know, we saw that those are traditional approaches really could only get us so far. None of this had come out in that. And so, as I mentioned, we needed to go much deeper, and that's when we partnered up with M-Sense and Millward Brown to take us there. And I am now going to turn it over to Mitzi, who is going to walk you through the approach. So we were really excited to go to Post and talk to them about a new approach that we had partnered with MSense on, taking you know, very traditional research from Millwood Brown that we know is proven and validated, gives a lot of evaluative and diagnostic research, and you know, is very robust in its technique, and partnering with state-of-the-art MSense in terms of understanding brainwave measurement and in a quantitative way. So again, really partnering with someone who can give us that quantitative insight, but at a different level, getting at the cognitive and emotional valence that we can see from consumers. And so in terms of how we approach it, we do our traditional copy testing link online with 150 respondents. And because within MSense, they have to, Alyssa will go on to talk to you about, they wear an overall headset on their, um, on their heads, obviously. They wear, they, they wear a headset. Um, we have to do that in a central location test. So that's also done amongst 150 people. And we think this is a very robust technique that can really lend additional insights to our marketers. And in terms of how we, we talk to the exact same samples, so they are different respondents, but they are matched samples in terms of category users. Okay, and then what we do is we really just integrate those results. And Alyssa is gonna talk to you about exactly what they're measuring. The major theme of the conference today has been both innovation and neuroscience has come up in many of the different sessions and I was really struck this morning by Tibor's question which I thought was one of the best questions of the conference which is there's so many people working in the neuroscience space and the biosensory space how do you know which one you should be using and what the different measures provide um, so I think that that's something that is useful for people to understand what the difference is because it's a big umbrella to say that we're dabbling in the neuroscience space. What MSense does is we have invented, so in the area of innovation, a dry wireless EEG device. And so what that means is that we are capturing brain waves at 20,000 times a second for each consumer. One thing that's very different about us is that we use quantitative sample sizes. 
So a typical study of ours will be 150 people, as is Millwood Brown. So we use pretty much the same kinds of sampling methodologies, um, geographic spread, the ability to do subgroup analysis that you would do with your standard quantitative uh, study designs. So this is our basic MSense headset, and this is what we used uh, in the post study with Kelly. And it, it's, its beauty is its simplicity um, in that it goes on the head. It fits just about any head shape. We used to have one that didn't fit uh, varied head shapes, and so we went back to the drawing board. Uh, you'd be surprised how much variation there is. Um, essentially, we have sensors in the uh, frontal lobes, which is the executive decision center of the brain. And we're measuring two main vectors. We're looking at people's response cognitively, meaning is the consumer actively engaging to the stimuli that you're exposing them to? And are they having a positive or negative emotional response? And we do those things on a correlation over time, second by second. And in some kinds of studies, we do it with a correlation to eye tracking. And there we'll use either mobile eye tracking or depending on the objective of the study, if we're go going uh, in store, for instance, we'll use mobile eye tracking. And I will just tell you that uh, at this conference, we also introduced our new headset. And our new headset is the M-Band 24. And this is different in that it has 24 sensors. A lot of people have said, well, why did you go from two to 24 sensors? And you can see that there are clusters of sensors in here. And it really has to do with uh, being able to provide strength of signal when people are moving about. Um, and so this is not necessarily going to be a replacement for this, um, but this is really designed for in-store shopping uh, for product usage experiences because the closer you can get to researching people when they're doing whatever it is they do naturally, be it consuming media or being uh, in the shopping mode, we want to be able to be as natural as possible. So this is the device and embedded in our device is also heart rate,